There's been a lot of buzz out there lately about the possibility that Death Stranding might somehow be related to Silent Hills, or that Kojima Productions might be working with Konami behind the scenes. Theories even extend as far as the possibility that Death Stranding might be connected to Metal Gear Survive. So in this video, I want to discuss my own thoughts and opinions on the matter. Now, I will admit that there are some really interesting coincidences that have been presented as evidence. The way both Death Stranding and Silent Hills feature Norman Reedus and Guillermo del Toro as involved parties. The way both PT and Death Stranding feature babies and themes related to umbilical cords. The way PT references ideas relating to alternate dimensions if you listen to some of the dialogue in the radio. Ideas that are also referenced in Death Stranding through Norman Reedus' necklace, which features equations carved on the the way the Silent Hills title is plural, possibly suggesting the possibility that there's more than one Silent Hill, multiple dimensions and whatnot. The way Metal Gear Survive also seems to delve into ideas relating to alternate dimensions. As well as external factors like the way Kojima Productions has recruited so many ex-Konami employees. And look, given how little we know about Death Stranding at the moment, there's really nothing that I can 100% disprove at the moment. Hell, I could argue that Death Stranding is actually a crossover between The Walking Dead and Hannibal and you wouldn't be able to say anything to disprove that except say something along the lines of yeah, that's highly unlikely. In that same manner, I am simply going to say that despite the many compelling coincidences and evidence provided, a direct connection between Death Stranding and Silent Hills or a partnership between the new Kojima Productions and Konami seems highly highly unlikely. And it's not even about disproving the coincidences or the implications regarding story and characters, because that's all secondary to what we should be really focusing on to authenticate the validity of this theory. The hurdle that must be overcome to even contemplate the possibility that Death Stranding is somehow connected to Silent Hills is the notion that Kojima and Konami are willing to work together again despite their ugly history. The core foundation to the theory that Death Stranding might somehow be connected to Silent Hills is the claim that events such as the feud between Kojima and Konami, the harassment that Kojima Productions endured during MGS5's development, Kojima leaving Konami and founding a new studio that is completely unaffiliated with Konami, Kojima no longer owning or having influence in IPs like Silent Hill, PT, and Metal Gear, all of which belong to Konami now, and the various denouncements towards Konami that Kojima's friends and partners have made over the past few months. That all of these things are all somehow a giant ruse. Without this idea that Kojima and Konami might still be in bed with each other somehow, unless Kojima wants a lawsuit in his hands, there is no legal possibility that Death Stranding is connected to any of Konami's IPs, whether that's Silent Hill, PT, or Metal Gear. This theory depends on Kojima and Konami being in cahoots with each other and having some kind of partnership that we don't know about. And this is where I believe that despite the compelling coincidences, the entire theory falls apart. Make no mistake, ladies and gentlemen, the feud between Kojima and Konami is absolutely real. The harassment that Kojima Productions had to endure during the development of MGS5 is absolutely real. Kojima leaving Konami as a result of the harassment and whatever feud was happening behind the scenes is real. All these things that people are speculating might be a ruse, are things that actually happened on an official capacity. Not only are these all things that various media outlets have reported based on their own sources within Konami and whatnot, there is actual documentation showing that Kojima has left Konami and that he has indeed founded his own indie studio. The falling out between Kojima and Konami isn't just some rumor at this point, it is a fact. I've also been in contact with a few folks in Kojima Productions, and the things that they have expressed to me, which I'm not at liberty to say, further confirm the reality of the fallout between Kojima and Konami. What I'm trying to say is, in terms of the debacle between Kojima and Konami, it is absolutely real. There isn't some grand conspiracy here. 
It's pretty much official. It's out there. Shit went down between Kojima and Konami, and that's not an opinion. That's a fact. And as long as that's true, there is very little chance that Kojima is actually willing to partner up with Konami again after all they went through. Now, it's not 100% impossible that they might set their differences aside and reestablish an amicable relationship, but one has to wonder how likely is that truly considering things like the harassment that Kojima Productions received from Konami during the development of MGS5. And these allegations of harassment of the Kojima Productions not being given a proper workplace during the development of Metal Gear Solid 5, these are not only things that have been reported by various media outlets, I myself, based on what some people have told me, can confirm that this is no joke, no ruse. Once again, shit did go down. After all that, do you really think that Kojima and team would even consider partnering with Konami? This is not only the company that fucked over Kojima Productions and stripped Kojima away from his baby, the Metal Gear series. This is the company who kept these guys essentially in shackles during the development of Metal Gear Solid 5. You know why Kojima left Konami and started up his new studio? Because he wanted bygones to be bygones, he wanted to move on, and he wanted to be free to pursue his own path. A big reason for why Kojima partnered up with Sony was because they have not only been friends for a long time, Sony also promised that they would give Kojima free reign over his project without corporate interference. A big part of why Kojima partnered up with Guerrilla Games was because the studio offered Kojima their engine on a silver platter with no strings attached. This idea of freedom, sharing, companionship, that's what Kojima wants moving forward, the complete opposite of his experiences at Konami. So think about it, for Kojima to revisit Konami would be a complete disservice to all of that. It would be a disservice to everything he has worked for in the year and a half that he's been away from Konami. So with all this in mind, unless Kojima gets special permission from Konami, he literally cannot touch franchises like Silent Hill and Metal Gear. And even if he did get special permission, I'm not sure Kojima would want to revisit those IPs, at least not in a while. It just doesn't make sense to me that Kojima would look backwards towards companies like Konami and projects like Silent Hills that are in the past and that would only hold him back from the freedom he has attained. Not to mention that Kojima went through a rough time during that Metal Gear Solid 5 development period, and I'm not sure why he would want to revisit that. And let me ask you this, what does Kojima have to gain by executing such a large-scale ruse? More spotlight? Maybe, but this would be the kind of spotlight that would only serve to confuse people and piss them off. Look, the Phantom Pain and the PT ruses both garnered positive reception because the circumstances surrounding those ruses were fairly positive. But this is a completely different situation. Metal Gear fans are pissed, Konami's reputation has gone to the shit, so just what would Kojima have to gain by associating Death Stranding with Silent Hills or by associating himself with Konami once again? Now, no matter what I say, I'm sure a handful of you will come to me and go, you don't know shit, Young, you weren't actually there, how could you possibly know or assume all these things? Well, yeah, I guess I cannot be 200% sure since I wasn't there physically when the feud between Kojima and Konami happened. But just look around you. You can see that Kojima has founded a new studio. It's clear as day. Kojima leaving Konami, again, official. Kojima founding his new studio, official. The various reports from multiple sources citing things like the harassment that happened within Konami during MGS5's development. It might as well be official. Secondly, again, I have been in contact with some folks from Kojima Productions who have shared some insight on some of the happenings within Konami during MGS5's development which is information that I cannot disclose, but it's pretty definitive stuff. And it was all things that matched up with the existing reports out there. There's even some frustration that so many people are still asking the new Kojima Productions about things like Metal Gear and Konami, things that they're no longer associated with. It's just very clear to me that they wanna move on, start fresh, 
make their own brand of awesome games. And no matter what I say, there will be people who will deny the Kojima Konami feud until the end. And you know what? That's fine. You can formulate your own theories, you have your beliefs, I have mine, and I can respect that. But I will say that the mentality of denying the feud between Kojima and Konami reminds me a lot of the whole David Hayter debacle. Despite the fact that David Hayter stated time and again throughout multiple interviews, including the one that I did in the codec, that he wasn't in any way involved in Metal Gear Solid V, that his feud with Konami and Kojima was real, and that if there is some trolling involved, he wasn't aware of it. Despite how many times he said that, nobody would believe him anyway. And look, I don't blame anyone for thinking that the whole David Hayter thing was a ruse. Frankly, I myself also wanted to believe that David Hayter would make a brief appearance as Solid Snake at the end of Phantom Pain, but it didn't happen. My point is that there is only so far a ruse can go, before it becomes immoral and counterproductive. Which is why after a while, after David Hayter kept denying his involvement in Metal Gear Solid V, and after having talked to him directly, I kind of knew and assumed that he just wouldn't be in the game. I feel like there was a point in which if this was a ruse, it would have gone a little too far. Look, I'll be the first one to admit that Kojima has done some crazy ruses, but all of those ruses have been within the confines of what services his projects. He never takes these ruses on a mass corporate level like this in a way that could compromise his integrity and his work. To fake the identity of your game's protagonist is one thing. To fake a grand feud with a company, to fake workplace harassment and hostility, to fake quitting a company to start a new studio, to fake making exclusive partnerships, to fake denouncements that have brought a company's reputation to a new low. That's just a whole new level of insanity as far as ruses go. This is a ruse taken 20 steps too far. I just don't think Kojima would go that far. It would do more harm than good. Kojima's ruses are aggravating at worst and awesome at best, but they are most certainly not disruptive on a mass corporate level. One last thing I'd like to address are the ex-Konami employees that Kojima Productions has been hiring. All I have to say about that is that with the old Kojima Productions dismantled and with Konami shifting their focus towards pachinkos and mobile games, it seems fairly understandable for those who have been working on AAA titles with Kojima for all these years to want to quit their current shitty company that is heading towards a direction in which their abilities and talents won't be used quite as much and pursue something more fulfilling like working with Hideo Kojima on AAA titles like Death Stranding. I don't think there's anything strange about employees quitting their current job so that they can get a better one. And considering these are friends and veterans that Kojima has worked with for many years, why wouldn't he want to hire these people? When Kojima left, Yoji Shinkawa and Ayako were already on board, so why not invite more? It looks like the new Kojima Productions is going to be comprised of both old friends and veterans, as well as new faces and new blood, which I think is a very smart idea. You know what all of this reminds me of? Chef Gordon Ramsay. I don't know if you know about this, but before he established his first restaurant, he used to work as head chef at a restaurant called Albergines. But one day, following some kind of dispute with the owners or the managers, Gordon Ramsay quit his job and decided to start his own restaurant. And the greatest thing is that all of the chefs who used to work for Gordon at this Albergine's restaurant, they quit their jobs and followed Gordon Ramsay to his new restaurant. Madame, uh, l'aubergine has been closed, madame, since three days ago. I'm sorry, yeah, uh, the chef has resign and the staff will walk out with him, yeah? Ramsey's growing disillusion with the way the aubergine is run by its owners, A to Z restaurants, has erupted into anger over the sacking of one of his chefs. He's decided to go it alone and open his own restaurant. That's a true story and this kind of thing happens when you've got a very talented leader who is pursuing exciting new ventures. All right, so long story short, I am all for the idea that Death Stranding might be drawing inspiration from Kojima's previous works, 
or that Kojima might be using some of his unused ideas from previous projects and implementing them into his new game. But with the reality of the situation between Kojima and Konami, no matter how compelling the coincidence is, it's just not legally possible for Death Stranding to be in any way associated with Silent Hills or Metal Gear. Until I see compelling evidence that Kojima and Konami are in fact partnering together for something, and I'm talking beyond circumstantial evidence, it's just not possible for me to believe that Death Stranding is in any way associated with Silent Hills, apart from some inspiration and drawing of unused ideas. And given the option, I don't believe Kojima would want to associate himself with Konami or any of its IPs. Not after what he had to endure during his time in Konami leading up to his eventual departure. It's the combination of the moral, idealistic, and legal ramifications that Death Stranding being connected to Silent Hills would have that makes me wholeheartedly believe that Death Stranding isn't in fact directly connected to Silent Hills. There might be some indirect connections here and there, but it just doesn't seem legally, morally, and idealistically possible for Kojima to justify making Death Stranding connected to Silent Hills in any direct way. Obviously, these are just my personal thoughts, theories, opinions, observations. I welcome any theories thrown my way and I respect any opinions and theories you might have. My goal with this video isn't to diss any one theory or another, it's just to present my personal thoughts. And honestly, as long as people are excited, entertained, and talking about it, I think it's cool that we're able to come together like this and discuss this exciting new venture that Kojima's undertaking. But I also did want to present what I believe to be reasonable considerations before you fully dive into this theory that Death Stranding is Silent Hills. Again, with how little we know about Death Stranding, it's hard to 100% say one way or another, but these are realistic considerations that I think are worth having so that you don't get too excited about one theory and then get disappointed when you realize that the game wasn't what you expected it to be. I think Death Stranding is its own thing, it's just Death Stranding. And I'd personally be more happy if it were that way. I want Kojima to strive towards new projects that are unrelated to his previous work. I wanna see what new things he can come up with. But yeah, I mean, who knows what will happen. Hopefully Kojima will shed more light on Death Stranding at E3 2017. And when that happens, I'm looking forward to having another discussion. Until then, let us know in the comments below what you think about these Death Stranding theories. Impossible, plausible, not sure what to think, any theories of your own that you'd like to share, let us know in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things Death Stranding, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yeong out.